Please be warned that the game features scenes with loss and mental illness, and if those are uncomfortable for you, then please click out of the video. Thank you. Hello friends, it's me, and today we're going to be playing a game called Endless Spring. This game was made by Luna Studios, and it is a visual novel about grappling with how you've lost someone exceptionally close to you and trying to help yourself move on and look at the things as they are and not how you made them out to be or how you portray it. This was a very interesting and unique concept of a game, which is why I was interested in playing it. I am excited to play this game, so make sure to sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and enjoy the gameplay! Drowning? Is this us or someone else? Or is this us watching? I'm not sure. I think it's us watching someone drown. Alright. But the art is so pretty. That's one of my worst fears, drowning, because I don't know how to swim. She was so young. It's unfortunate she had to go this early. So it was someone else, and I'm guessing you were there when she drowned? I'm just guessing. The murmurs of the people behind you pull you back into the present. You can hear them talking. They were there with her, weren't they? They just stood there watching her drown. It was too late by the time the ambulance arrived. What if they pushed her in? That's just a horrible thing to say, and that's just horrible. Kids these days are so unpredictable. That's just mean and rude to say. The innocent they look, the evil they could be. That's just, that's just really mean. That's a low blow. Amongst everyone's tear-stained faces, he sit there with a blank expression. I'd actually do the same because if everyone here is talking about that kind of thing, becoming a subject to more rumors. The reality of not being able to grieve for your longtime friend also weighs down on you. A part of you does want to cry, but your brain isn't cooperating. The tears won't come out. You feel uneasy. There's something in your head that you just can't focus on. Or you can interact with highlighted objects. Oh, the picture. Looking at the picture adorned with flowers, you feel a, ping, a pang in your chest. She's gone. She was such a wonderful person. Thinking back to what happened, all you can recall is ambulance sirens. Oh, I can understand that. Strings of words interrupt your thoughts. You can't make sense of them. The atmosphere around you is getting overwhelming. You want to mourn in privacy. It's impossible to grieve here. You walk over to the exit. Her mother stands there, surrounded by grieving relatives. You can't seem to look into her eyes. Oh, I hate confrontation. I'd feel so guilty if that were to happen to me in real life. She stares you down and you feel smaller than you have. She blames you for not saving her child in time. You knew it. You pity her. Should you say anything? I want to be able to say something, like apologize maybe, I don't know, but at the same time, it's scary to confront them because I know she's blaming me for the death of her daughter. But if I leave now, she might think that I'm selfish for not even saying a word to her or anything. Oh my god, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm wondering if our relationship is close enough for me just to say I'll be there for you, but I think I'm too scared to talk to her. You think like you will begin to panic if you stay a minute longer. You decided against staying. I mean, it's best, I guess, because it's a group of relatives, so 
might be best to let them be for a while. You walk home on autopilot and find yourself unlocking your apartment door. The room is dark. You navigate yourself to the bed and fall face first. Trying to think back to what happened. Please don't step too close to the edge. Did we say that? Or did she say that? I am not sure. What was that you said? Did you say it in time? You probably could have prevented it. She didn't listen. Okay, that one I could read. She was being aggressive. Again, these intrusive thoughts are worse than ever, but they're completely intangible today. Um, how about... Personally, I keep thinking about it, but if I do, I feel like it's gonna reach a bad ending, and she'll just feel even more guilty and sad about the situation. So I don't want that for the character. So I guess I'll think of trying to focus, I think try to remember what had happened. And hopefully nothing bad happens from doing that, right? You try your hardest to think what is causing this conflict. You need to focus on these thoughts so you can clear your mind. You think back to the day. I'm not sure this is the right choice. Do you try to stop her? You do recall telling her to stop. You're anxious by nature, of course you would. What are you telling yourself then? She didn't listen. She didn't listen. She didn't listen. She didn't listen to you. So we did warn her. Like always, your advice was laughed off. Your head begins to hurt. Sleep comes in waves and you succumb to it. You wake up early morning to the chirping of the birds. The sunlight is seeping through the curtains and falling on your face. It's good to see that she did get some rest. You feel very relaxed and well rested. A glimpse of what happened yesterday pops in your head. It's such an empty feeling. Gosh, I didn't do it, right? It was beyond my control at that point. Some things can't be helped. To think one moment you're with her and the next she's just not around anymore. All the thoughts popping up in your head starts to overwhelm you again. Maybe I should pay her a visit. I think she should. Maybe. Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's good for us to visit her. Getting out of bed brings you back to the present. You give yourself a mental push to carry on with the day. Moving the curtains away, you take a long, deep breath. You chose a random attire from the closet. Take a shower and get ready. Even though you don't feel like eating much, Oh, that looks good. You treat yourself to some nice breakfast. Oh, she has coffee, bread. I'm not sure what that is. No, there's a rice. While eating, you find yourself reminiscing random moments, and it hits you again that she's gone. I don't know how I'll be able to continue going there now. It had a serenity that I could never find anywhere else. To think I'd have such memories attached to it now. Well, I guess it'll be okay. You're having difficulty swallowing, but you finish up somehow. After washing the dishes and putting them back, you leave for the river. Walking down the street, you pass the flower shop. The scent of the flower gains your attention and brings you some warmth. You can buy a flower for her, that's good. Maybe I could bring her some flowers. You think while you unwittingly walk inside. You could buy her a pretty flower. You enter the flower shop and are welcomed with a vast variety of flowers. 
It's like a colorful world painted by an abstract artist. Flores is standing at the corner. She's zoned out, staring into space. Well, hello there. If you take a look around, the more you look at these flowers, the difficult it gets for you to choose one. You end up having to decide between the two you like the most. Oh, well, these are these two are pretty. Okay, these two are pretty. Let's check this one. Gladius. Gladius? I cannot pronounce it. It symbolizes remembrance, beauty, and friendship. Oh, this is perfect. Hmm. Should I get this? I want to check the other one first before we get it. Poppy. A flower that symbolizes consolation and remembrance. I mean, it's good too, but I, I want to get the one with the friendship as well because I am good friends with the person that passed away. So, I'll get the gladiolus. Gladiolus. I can never pronounce that properly. Plus, it's pretty. I like it a lot. Or maybe this one. I can't decide on you. I want to go any mini mini mo. Okay, cons let's just get this one. We choose the gladiolus and walk up to the counter. We wait for a few seconds for her to notice you, but she doesn't. Maybe she also has a lot going through her mind, or she's just spacing out. She still hasn't noticed you. She seems to be a lost in a world of her own. Um, let's just see something instead of putting flowers at the counter. Um, excuse me. She comes back to reality and notices you. Oh, hi. Sorry, I was kind of lost and talked. Welcome to my flower shop. I think it's cute to owning a flower shop. It's nice. You can tell she's panicking and trying to get a hold of herself. Um, let's just wait quietly. Then pressure her more. I feel like she'll be pressured if we ask her. We wait quietly, looking around to avoid awkward interaction as she's trying her best to keep her composure. You hand over the flower that you chose. She's so nervous, her hands are shaking. While you're handing her the flower, her phone begins to ring. She looks at her phone and seems slightly worried. Please excuse me for a moment. She disappears to the back of her shop. While waiting, you catch parts of the conversation. How long are... Keep her there. Is she doing... Better? Yes. Alright, I'll close. Visit right away. Oh, she has something on her plate as well. She returns to the counter and has grown more worried than she was before. Sorry for the wait. She looks at the flowers again. This was all, right? Yes. You give her the flower. She prints out the receipt and gives it to you. Oh, let's give her a tip. I hope that would help. You add a little tip to the bill. Well, you didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for shopping. Have a good day. She gives a tired smile while handing over the flowers to you. You reach the river. It's walking distance from where you live. It's quite breezy and you can hear the sound of waves and the sound of distant traffic passing over the bridge. Usually this scene will bring some peace of mind. But today, it just feels like a backdrop for the worst nightmare over and over again. You stand near the railing where she stood the day she lost her life. You breathe and take in the view to calm yourself down. Cold wind blows mixing with the sound of water splashing against the walls of the riverbank. You put down the flowers you brought. You notice someone else also left flowers there. They are fresh. You get up and turn towards the endless horizon. Look who decided to take out some time to visit me. You are very familiar with that voice. And for a second, it catches you by surprise. You look towards the source of the voice, and your eyes can't believe what they were saying. You. Is it her? Oh no, it's a ghost. It's her ghost. Hey, hey, take my picture at the count of three, okay? Oh, I can understand. Um... I think that one's weight, the left one's right, weight, right? So I'll just say the weight. What? Why are you so boring? Stop being my mom. I'm not gonna fall, okay? What is wrong with you? Um, 
That one's please. I can't understand the other ones. I'm just gonna go please. Just take my phone and take the picture. And she fell off the railing, I'm guessing. She just wanted the picture, but she fell off. Okay, that's that's really sad. Wait a minute. Um, oh no. Is that the end? Prologue and- Oh, that's the end of the prologue? Thank you for playing the first chapter of the game. We'll hopefully bring you more content in the near future. We really appreciate you playing the game. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. You can play it again and try out different choices. Follow us on Instagram to keep updated to the process. We have commented, it will really help a lot. Until then, take care. Oh, so that's the prologue. So they're not finished with the game yet. Okay, before I give my thoughts of the game, let's try playing the different ending. I'll try to look for different choices. I'll pick different choices and see how it goes. So let's go to the other choices. So that's one of the choices that I'm gonna change. It will be talking to her mother in the wake. So let's try talking to the mother of our friend that passed away. I don't think this will end well. I think we could get embarrassed, but let's try to see what happens to the outcome if you do talk to her mother. I do sympathize with her though, but I hope she doesn't hate us that much. She stares you down and you feel smaller than you have. She blames you for not saving her child in time. You know it. You pity her. Should you say something? Let's maybe gently and, you know, calmly talk to her. Um, she's surrounded by her relatives, so worst case scenario, we're gonna get embarrassed or humiliated, but I hope that doesn't happen. I hope we have a proper and gentle conversation with the mother. <laughs> I hope I hate awkward scenarios like these, so usually I just leave, so, but let's see what happens if we do end up talking to her. I'm getting angry just waiting, okay. Let's try. You walk over to her. But you don't get the word in because she immediately begins to yell, this is what I was scared of. Why was it her? She didn't deserve it. The pain in her eyes is evident. It shouldn't have been her. Why her? Are you saying it should have been me? Would have been better you had you. People start staring, so she stops. Okay, that's, that's just terrible. I sympathize with her, but that's just terrible to say. You're standing there in shock. I know she's grieving, but that's not, the, that's not a good thing to say. Had you? Had you been in her place? Maybe so. You're not at her and see yourself out. That's... Regardless of the situation, that's still a pretty bad and mean thing to say to a person. You walk home on autopilot and unlock the door with shaking hands. The room is dark. You navigate yourself to the bed and fall face first. That's just, just terrible to say. Trying to think back to what had happened. Please don't step close to the edge. We did warn her, I guess. Was that what you said? Did you say it in time? You probably could have prevented it. She didn't listen. She was being aggressive. Again, these intrusive thoughts are worse than ever, but they're completely intangible today. Okay, another choice that I didn't make is to keep thinking, so let's do that. You shift uneasily in bed. Sleep will not come to you. You recall her mother's words. Or the guilt is gonna eat her alive. It shouldn't have been her. Why her? That's the first thing to say to a person. Would have been better had you. It really would have been better. Had you died. Your life isn't worth much to begin with. You hold back tears and struggle to fall asleep. Your intrusive thoughts and the murmurs of her family from earlier make it impossible to sleep in peace. It's 12am and you wake up panting. 
He dreamt everyone at the funeral was looking at you. They were smiling as you were being lowered in a grave. Her mother was absolutely beaming with joy. Serves them right. Jeez, just thinking about that is just awful. It's awful. Serves you right. These nightmares will keep you up. But your mind is so exhausted that you pass out. You open your eyes to your head ringing in a blurry vision. The headache is too much for you to continue sleeping. You lie there staring blankly at the ceiling while thoughts of yesterday haunt you. The words of her mother keep playing in your head constantly. They're not helping to pain. These voices in your head aren't anything new. But this is a whole different burden as the weight of those thoughts is unbearable. You prefer having voices in your head that taunt you and attack your deepest insecurities than the voices of a mother accusing you of involuntary manslaughter. It hurts. I can't focus on anything like this. Is how I managed to sit up and get out of bed just so you could be away from these voices. I should go to the river. Maybe pay her a visit. Do I want to pay her a visit? Is the guilt telling me to go there? Hmm. Or is it the routine I've been following for quite some time now? You ask yourself questions. Will it be the same anymore? The place I used to find comfort in has become a reason I have these voices constantly ringing in my head. You put on your clothes. You have no appetite even though you've been hungry since yesterday. Your head still hurts so you decide to take a pill for it and leave for the river. You are welcomed by an early morning breeze after leaving the apartment. By walking towards your destination, you come to a halt at the flower shop and the overwhelming scent of flowers makes you nauseous. Uh, even this shop is a nightmare today. Oh, we didn't stop there. You reach the river. It's walking distance from where you live. It's quite breezy and you can hear the sound of waves and the sound of distant traffic passing over the bridge. Usually this scene will bring me some peace of mind. But today, it just feels like a backdrop for the worst nightmare over and over again. You sit at the edge of the river, gentle waves lap at the tip of your shoes. There's a cold edge in the air that grounds you in reality and keeps your mind from going astray. The sounds of early morning traffic brings your attention to the railing where it all happened. You can't help but recall the incident. You can barely picture a vivid image in your head of that time. It's another jumble of letters. I can't understand it. Oh no. I can understand picture though. There's a word picture there. I see stubborn. Why are you stubborn? And she's just demanding for a picture. A gust of cold wind brings you back to the present. You feel a sharp pain. You open your hand to find small crescent-shaped wounds across your palms. You realize that you dug your nails into your palm while taking back and hurt yourself. 
that's going to hurt. Yeah, it will. You reply without thinking and look back towards the voice and your eyes open wide in shock. You. Is it her? Oh, it's her. Hey, hey. Take my picture on the count of three, okay? Wait. Let's wait. What? Why are you so boring? Stop being my mom. I'm not going to fall, okay? What's wrong with you? Let's go with please. Just take my photo and take the picture. And I'm guessing she fell. Oh wait, that's it? Wait, that's it? Oh no. I wanna know more though. Okay, okay, okay. I have a few things to say about this game. Thank you for playing the first chapter of the game. Aww. We'll hopefully bring you more content in the near future. We really appreciate you playing this game. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it for you. You can play it again and try out different choices. Follow us on Instagram to stay up to date with the process. Progress. Leave a comment, it will be nice. Until then, take care. Oh, that's sweet. That's really sweet. I actually have a lot to say about this game, but before that, I want to first thank Luna Studios for reaching out to me and telling me about their game. I am very honored that they contacted me about this. Fun fact, I actually had their game on my list of indie games to try out, so it seemed like a perfect opportunity to go ahead and play this game immediately. And honestly, I fell in love with this game starting from the beautiful art style that was just super pleasing to look at. I could literally tell from their artworks that they really put some effort on it. They took some time and effort because I'm genuinely mesmerized. The music? Boy, the music. I am a sucker for kalimba music. Those two itself is a compliment for the whole theme that the game was going for. As for the story, I was drawn to the topic of grief and was interested on how the visual novel would play it out. And it did not disappoint at all. I'm not sure how many endings there are, I just found this, the two ones earlier. But I am looking forward to this project and I'm very proud of how hard they've worked on. But that's all for my input and that's all for today's video. So make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and comment down what you guys want me to play next. And as always, I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Take care and be sure to follow them in their future projects, okay? Because I am looking forward to it. Bye bye. Mwah.